proudly we hail. New York City, where the American stage begins, here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your army to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, Two's a Crowd. In the ranks of an airborne division, as with all paratroopers, there is a certain spirit coming from the pride that is natural to members of an elite corps. This spirit showed strong and true in the hearts of the men making up what we shall call Charlie Company of the 327th Airborne Regiment. Our first act curtain will rise in just one moment, and you shall hear more of Charlie Company. But first, you ask most anyone what they want out of life, and a great majority of the answers can be boiled down to just one word. And that one word is happiness. Well, now, happiness is a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But basically, I guess you might say that it's the achievement of your goals. To be happy is to be successful in whatever you do. And in today's highly specialized world, training is the key to success. If you're a young man of service age, you can get free training worth thousands of dollars by enrolling now in your United States Army's new Reserve for You training program. Under this plan, you can enter the course of your choice and be trained in such interesting fields as X-ray operation, photography, automotive maintenance, and communications. In all, there are over 100 courses to choose from. And you can make your own choice and receive a letter of acceptance which guarantees you a seat in your course before you enlist. You can become a qualified technician trained to do an important job. So for full information about an exciting career, visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Ask the nice people all about the Reserve for You training program. Remember, there's no obligation. And now we present Act One of the proudly we hail production, Two's a Crowd. <laughs> Charlie Company entered into every intramural contest with unmatched zeal, but their enthusiasm availed them little. To put it bluntly, Charlie Company never won anything. Their baseball nines were forever in the cellar. In the regimental competitions, their basketball teams came in fourth, no matter what they entered. What's new on the bulletin board, Eddie? Oh, hello, Frank. The results of the ping pong tournament. Oh, how'd we do? Gunther made the quarterfinals. Well, what about the doubles? And they got in the second round. Drew a bye in the first. Oh, well. You seen Weldon? Your friend Thorndike? In the gym, I think, lifting weights. I hear there's a competition coming up. Oh, you didn't tell me about that. I, you know, I never saw a guy who practiced so much. Whatever's in season, he's practicing it. If anyone typified the luck of Charlie Company, it was Private Weldon Thorndike. Weldon's and Thorndike's both had distinguished themselves on the country's battlefields since 1776. But despite the example of his illustrious forebears to encourage him to tell the truth, Private Thorndike had been bucking for his first important stripe for almost a year. But nothing he did could attract the favorable attention of his superiors. And when he was noticed, it was only when he was doing something he shouldn't. Gallop! Oh! All right, men, take ten. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> Brother, is it hot? I could go for about a gallon of lemonade. Yeah, me too. Hey, well, where's Thorny? <laughs> Shall we tell him? Well, you better tell me. <laughs> well, we're walking along, you know, and you're up a ways. Yeah, yeah, go on. Well, I said something to Thorny like, boy, is it hot? Well, he doesn't answer. Well, go on. So I says it again, boy, is it hot? Come on, come on, get to the point. Well, I turn around and look at him real close, and he's asleep. Asleep? Yeah, he's walking along and he's asleep. Well, so, so, so where is he now? Well, I, I don't want to disturb him. I wish I could sleep like that myself. Just then we come to that fork in the road, we're, we're at the end of the column, but we take the left-hand fork, and I don't pay any attention, and a few minutes later I say something again to Thorny, and when he don't answer, I turn around and he ain't there. I figure he's still walking down the road. The right-hand fork, that is. <laughs> Thorny was returned to the fold like an errant sheep. 
Things might have continued along like this indefinitely, except that a few days later... Hey, what's up? Division maneuvers, that's what. Gee, swell. Starting when? Next week. All the VIPs will be there, I guess. Gee, you know, this is our big chance. Chance for what? To show what Charlie Company can do, of course. This is the real test. So what if we don't win the baseball pennant and our football team's no good? That doesn't mean a thing. It's what we do in the maneuvers that counts. Sure. Listen. Now, look, there's one thing you've got to do. What? You've got to watch Thorny. What do you mean? Well, you know, if there's something he can do that'll mess everything up, he'll find it. Trust him. You've got to keep your eyes on him every minute. If you do that, we're in. Listen, you lay off him, will you? He tries. You've got to give him credit for that. And also... And also, you promise me you'll watch him. That's all I ask, see? Just watch him. Okay, okay. Oh, the first sergeant says the captain's going to announce our mission tomorrow. Oh, yeah? I wonder what we'll get. Charlie Company's mission was announced as promised the following day. The troops of the division were to be dropped in an area presumed to be neutralized by an atomic weapon. Their problem was to consolidate and hold the area before the aggressive forces could recover, and finally to make contact with other friendly forces pushing up from the south. Company C had been assigned the job of guarding their battalion headquarters, and as proved... Oh, can you beat that? Now we'll never see action. Yeah, it doesn't look like it, does it? Yeah, what a break. Are you kidding? In a few days, morale had dropped to its lowest ebb in the despondent ranks of Charlie Company. And then, the day and hour of departure dawned. Oh, oh 400. Once, just once, I'd like to go on a maneuver that started at, say, uh, 1,300 hours. That'll be the day. Where's your friend Thorny? Don't tell me you lost him already. Oh, he's around somewhere. He'll be all right. All right. All right. Now, look, you promised oh, me... Oh, cut it out. Here he comes now. Good morning, fellas. Hi, Thorny. Uh, these hours don't bother you none, do they? Oh, huh? I, I like to get up early. Yeah, oh, boy. You know, I, I just can't get over our good fortune. What do you mean? The assignment been changed at the last minute? Changed? Well, I don't think so. We still have it. That's the good fortune. We have the most important job in the battalion. Don't you know that? No, no. Tell us. Well, in the first place, we're responsible for the headquarters, the major and all his staff. Gee, ain't that wonderful. Oh, I sure. You don't think the major'd want any eight-ball outfit around him, do you? Maybe he wants to keep an eye on us. And then you know we're responsible for maintaining the communication. That's right. And we are to take charge of the forward supply point. Uh, but say, I, I... I believe you're ribbing me, Eddie. You know all about this. Don't be silly. Come on, tell me more. Well, uh... <clears throat> of course, it's up to us to see that the forward troops get their hot food. Mm -hmm. We'll protect those mess trucks as they deliver to the front lines. You know the soldier's morale depends in great part on the regularity with which he can be fed hot food. Well, that part of it gives me courage. I sure won't mind protecting the cooks. That was a good speech, Thorny. Well, thanks. Well, I've uh, got to go and collect my gear. Okay, pal. See you later. Oh, absolutely. Well... At least Thorny's happy. Of course, he's the only guy in the outfit that don't know we got the worst mission in the whole division. Oh, I don't know. It can't be the worst. After all, there are other battalions, and they all have communications and headquarters. And then an odd thing happened. There in the black pre-dawn, huddled together with their packs and equipment like some men from another planet, a strange thing came over Charlie Company. Maybe it was the complete improbability of Charlie Company's ever seeing action, much less being able to prove they were as good as they thought. Or maybe they just figured worse, that Charlie Company followed the universal pattern. When things get so black they look hopeless, that's when men start saying to themselves, no matter what happens, we're going to lick it. And morale commenced to rise. Okay, fellas, this is it. Let's go. I'm the devil. Get the lead out. Come on. And I'm the devil it was, too. And a funny thing. Everyone was aware of what had happened. Hey, everyone looks sharp this morning. Yeah, I noticed that, too. That's a funny thing. I can't understand it. Well, sharp or not, this is it. We're going to do something for the next few days, <laughs> no matter how far from action we are. You said it. Well, the men look pretty good this morning, don't they, Corporal? The way they were griping about our mission, I thought they'd come dragging in. <laughs> yeah, when the chips are down, they're usually on the ball. All set, Sergeant? Yes, sir, all set. All right. Let's go, then. 
Approaching the drop area, things become pretty tense in these huge troop-laden aircraft. Although orders are not transmitted vocally, every man knows from the system of light signals and the hand signals of the drop master what to do. As the drop area is neared, the men stand in two orderly lines, each checking the equipment of the one in front of him. The company commander hears the voice of the pilot through the ICS, telling him that the target has been reached, and suddenly, from the Earth, it's a line of black dots spewing out of the huge aircraft. And if you're one of the jumpers, it's a release from a point of total noise to the comparative quiet of the air, the huge plane having already moved away. There's the jerk of the lines as your chute opens, and the ground coming up at you with increasing rapidity. And then another lurch as you hit, hoping always it's a nice soft piece of earth, tumbling over a couple of times, perhaps. And then gathering up your silk, all unconsciously, because you've done it so many times. And then the shouts as the men group together, as they've been trained to do. All right, then, quiet down. Quiet down! Boys, we're making you have the whole aggressor army on our necks. Hey, this ain't no battalion headquarters like I've ever seen. I guess the wind blew us off a little. Oh, hi, Thonia. I see you made it all right. Oh, I sure like that coming down part. Well, I guess Charlie Company's going to make history now. Well, it was soon apparent that Private Thorndyke spoke with not inconsiderable truth. Though the exact nature of the distinction awaiting Charlie Company was still in doubt. For after a brief reconnaissance, Captain Fletcher determined that not only was there no trace of battalion headquarters, but there were no supplies, nor yet a single communications line. There was, in fact, so much of nothing that it was suspected that they had been blown into another county. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Two's a Crowd, and we will return to our second act in just one moment. But first... You know, I've always found it to be true that a man with a good eye to the future makes a good soldier. And that's why so many bright young men and women are joining the United States Army now. For Army life is an exciting career and there's plenty of room up at the top. Today, American soldiers get the finest technical training in the world. Every man is a specialist, a master at his job. And the Army sees to it that every man is trained to do his job and what's more important, to do it right. If you're a young man of service age, you can get free training worth thousands of dollars by enrolling now in your United States Army's new Reserve for You training program. Now, that's called the Reserve for You training program. It's a very important plan because under this plan, you can enter the course of your choice and be trained in such interesting fields as X-ray operation, photography, automotive maintenance, and communications. In all, there are over 100 courses to choose from. Because the Army is growing so rapidly, Today's soldiers are being promoted fast. Oh, you'll work hard, sure, but believe me, the rewards are really well worth it. Right now, the Army needs healthy, intelligent men and women, volunteers from 18 to 34. So if you've got what it takes, then you think seriously about an Army career. Stop in at your nearest United States Army recruiting station today. Get all the facts about what the Army has to offer you. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of two's a crowd. Okay, man. Okay. Now, we've apparently been blown off the target area. Have a little marching to do. Now, we're going to keep off the road. No telling what we'll find there. I want three men to cover us from the rear. Uh, you there, Sergeant Chambers. Yes, sir. Pick two other men and stay about 300 yards back. If you see anything, fire two shots. Right, sir. Okay, Frank. Thorny's got to be one of them. All right, all right. Uh, who are you taking, Sarge? I'll take Private Thorndyke, sir. I, uh, I'd better go along, too. He needs another watcher, that guy. And, and Corporal Henley. Okay, fine. Well, let's get going. And don't forget, men, all of you. Take cover if you hear an aircraft. We can't be sure it's not one of theirs. <laughs> Captain, say how much of a walk we've got. Huh? You heard what I heard. Oof. Hasn't rained here in a month. You feel this ground? If it had just rained, you'd be griping about the mud. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Wonder if we'll get there in time for chow. Boy, I hope so. I could use some. Me too. 
There's a large, empty spot where my stomach formerly was located. Now, one thing we can be sure of, and that is that there'll be food there. Yeah, that's something. Of course, if we don't get there pretty soon, they may be serving it to the aggressors. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The Major's going to be a bit unhappy, to say the least, to have us come waltzing in late. Well, I should think he'd be glad we showed up at all. That's all you know about the Major. <laughs> hey, that's the same plane as before. Do you think he spotted us? Well, let's hope not. It's one of theirs, too. I saw the markings this time. Well, he didn't strafe any, huh? Even if he did, there's no umpire around. The heck you say. Some of them are riding in the aircraft. empty place in my stomach is becoming more empty by the minute. Boy, for once you and I are in agreement. Uh, I believe I smell something. What? I smell the unmistakable odor of meat cooking, meat and potatoes. I'm afraid it's just a mirage, Thorny. The captain's ahead. If we were anywhere near, he'd have stopped the column. Well, I don't know. My nose has never played me false heretofore. And when in the past I have smelled meat and potatoes, there have been meat and potatoes in the vicinity. Hey, Frank, I think he's right. I smell it too. My gosh. Hey, I think you're both right. Uh-huh. A quick Eddie. Run up ahead and tell the captain. I think it's coming from, from off there to the right. Okay, I'm off. And sure enough, led by Private Thorndike's reliable nose, Charlie Company marched square into battalion headquarters where a mess truck newly arrived was emitting the savory odors. Here they were greeted with a somewhat different reception than they had feared. Advance and be recognized. Company C here. Sir, you must have a couple of horseshoes in your pocket. Oh? We'd given up hoping to see you. We're surrounded, sir, and our communication had been cut. You must have walked right through the enemy lines. Surrounded, huh? Yes, sir, the wind. Everyone landed in a different area than we were supposed to. Uh, well, I'd better talk to the Major. Yes, sir. He's going to be right glad to see you, sir. And this proved to be the case. But the problem ahead of Charlie Company, apart from filling a number of empty spots in their respective interiors, was of sending word to regimental headquarters of the plight of the battalion and of getting reinforcements sent in time to relieve them. Well, I must say, I feel better now. Ah, me too. <clears throat> and where is this war? Well, from the looks of things, it's going to be over for us before it starts. Yeah, what's the scoop, Frank? What are we going to do? Well, the captain's been talking to the colonel. I guess they're going to have to send for reinforcements. Seems like two companies were wiped out this morning. Yeah, tough luck. Yeah. Enemy tanks ambushed them, and the umpires ruled them out completely. The fact is, we're about the only outfit that's still intact. Oh, oh, uh, there's a captain uh, now. Sergeant Chambers, would you step over here a minute? Oh, yes, sir. Right away, sir. Boy, I sure like the way you volunteered me for this assignment, buddy. Well, I couldn't help it. Well, you could have picked someone else. I thought you'd like it. At least we're doing something, not just sitting around waiting to get captured. It's rather pleasant out here in the woods. Nice and quiet. Yeah. I was just kidding. Back there, we'd probably be mechanizing three shovels, digging trenches. Shh. Hey, we, we better keep quiet. Remember, we're, we're right in the middle of the enemy lines now. If we get ourselves captured, the whole company's had it, let alone the battalion and the major. Hey, hold it, you guys. Hmm? There's something up ahead. Oh, who's that? He talking to us? Apple Blossom. Hey, hey, it's the aggressors. Look at the funny helmets they got. Shh, listen. Candlelight. Advance, we recognize. Go ahead and get your chow. I'm relieving you. Oh, thanks. I can use some. Hey, when are we moving out? I don't know. I think we're waiting for reinforcements. They got a battalion cut off, and we're going to take the headquarters. No kidding? Yeah. Captain says be careful going back. You're well, so long. That's a break. Huh? What do you mean? We got their sign and counter sign. Gee, that's right. We ought to be able to use that somehow. I have an idea. What? Watch and see. Hey, Thorny, Thorny, come back. Let him go, let him go. We're better off if he gets captured. All he can do is louse up their stockade for him. Oh, who's there? Apple Blossom. Candlelight. Hey, where are you? Right over here. What? Hey, you're one of the defenders. On the other side. That's quite correct. And you are now out of action. Kindly hand me your surrender card. 
Oh, what do you think you're doing? I believe they say in the vernacular, you have had it. <laughs> oh, gee. All right, all right. Frank? Eddie? What shall we do with this fellow? <laughs> There's a jeep with two umpires in it parked on the road back there. One of us can take him back. <laughs> nice going, Thorny. Yeah, nice going. That was pretty neat. Well, I merely availed myself of information which fell into our hands and... Shh, shh, shh. Here comes another victim into our trap. You. Yeah. If you make any outcry, I shall be forced to violate the Geneva Conference and hit you on the head with my weapon. Okay. Hey, Jake, I forgot. Holt, who's there? Oh, you know who it is. You just relieved me. Hey. Who are you? We in turn have relieved your friend, fella. Yeah. And now uh, you've had it. Hand that card over and no back talk. Yeah, sure. Okay, you guys, come with me. I don't want you to get lost on the way back to those umpires. Be nice if we could just sit here all day and rake them in. Yeah, but we can't. We still got to get through the division. Yes, and what's more, we must keep this group here until one of us can get through and send reinforcements. Right. They're expecting company, and if they get it, Charlie Company will never be able to hold out a battalion. If a battalion goes, we're on the flank of the regiment. That'll go, maybe the whole war. The way the Indians used to fight the British was... Thorny. Just listen. We've got to use desperate measures. Okay, tell me. Well, my great-great-great-grandfather... Sure, Thorny, but just tell me what you have in mind. All right. They used to shoot from behind the trees, and if they were outnumbered, they'd move around. Now, sometimes just a few of them could hold off a whole regiment. Yeah, they didn't have B.A.R. shooting back at them either. Or machine guns. No, but have you a better plan? I gotta admit, I haven't. You think we could do it? We can try. Oh, hold it. What's only Eddie? To save time, we'll have him go back. Hey, what's up? Tony and I are, are staying here and watch the outfit. You gotta go on alone. Huh? What's with it? We're gonna try to hold him off until you can get back. And Eddie... Bring a couple of 105s, huh? Oh, sure. Anything your little heart desires. Come on now, clue me in, will you? Take this phony aggressor helmet that this guy dropped and put it on. If you meet anyone, give them the countersign. Don't bother to stick to the woods now. We haven't got much time. If they're reinforced, they'll move. Okay. Uh, how long do you think it'll take you? A well, half hour, maybe, to get there. Less time coming back because they can send, send vehicles, maybe. Uh -huh. We can do it, Frank. Sure. So long, Eddie. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't take it easy. Thorny! Thorny! Yeah. Here I am. You can't sleep at a time like this. My conscience is clear. I know, but... And I knew you were awake. And in the meantime, at the regimental headquarters, an excited Corporal Henley was making a report. Sir? Corporal Henley, Company C, bringing a message from Major Jameson. He says to tell you, sir, we're cut off and we need reinforcements. Uh -huh. That is, the whole battalion is cut off. Also, sir, my two buddies are back there and they're surrounding a company. And if we can't stop them there, we'll lose the war. Yeah, now, 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 take it easy. One thing at a time, Corporal. You say your two buddies have surrounded a company? Thorny. Yes? I think they're getting ready to move. This is it. You ready? Sure. Don't forget to move around plenty now. I won't. Here they come. And save the grenades until the umpires get here. If they land in a bunch, we'll get a whole lot more credit. Okay. Thorny. Yes? If this idea works, you've as good as got that stripe. The Weldons and the Thorndikes will be proud. Pete, Harry, Joe, George, over here. Weldon, come Thorndike, on. Harrison, get in there and fight, men. Come on, that's it. Get in there. Get down, Thorny. They got their machine gun set up. Good, good. Here come the umpires. I thought they'd get that. I'd get them. Forget to refill those bits every chance you get. Yes, indeed. All right, Thorny, this is it. Unlimber that pitching arm for those dummy grenades. Right over the plate, every one. It'll be a pleasure. Bullseye. All right, watch this one. Another. It's, it's miraculous. Look, look. The umps are, are ruling out that machine gun. See that bunch over there running up? Wow, a grenade fell right in the middle. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Have your surrender cards ready. 
Have your surrender cards ready. 31. 32. Are you the man who sent for well, reinforcements? Yes, sir. Well, all I have to say is that you very nearly didn't need them. How did you do it? Oh, we didn't really do it alone, sir. It was the Weldons and the Thorndikes that did it. Oh, what he means to say, well, sir, never is... mind, Sergeant. I'm seeing that you two get full credit for this. Now I know what the corporal meant when he said that his two buddies had a company surrounded. These two men, acting on their own initiative, held off an entire company for almost half an hour until reinforcements arrived with light artillery. To their credit, personally, are 35 prisoners. Sergeant Chamber and Private Thorndike. Well, Thorny, you're famous. <laughs> you too. Yeah, but you know whose idea it was. Well, not mine. Remember, I told you about my great, great, great grandfather. <laughs> I wonder... What? Well, you know, about the stripe. Come here. Look. Oh, well... My mother always told me to read the fine print at the bottom. Right there on the board. And effective immediately, Private Weldon Thorndike is raised in grade to private first class. Well, I suppose if I keep it up, I can yet do credit to the Weldons and the Thorndikes. <laughs> In the world of music, the melody plus a good arrangement and a good performer most often determines a song's success. Now, in the drama, well, there are the plays, the thing, plus, of course, good actors to deliver the lines. And in whatever occupation you choose, training and teamwork are the reasons for success. If you're a young man of service age, you can be trained for success in the course of your choice by enrolling now in your United States Army's new Reserve for You training program. There are over 100 courses to choose from in such fields as radar, guided missiles, automotive maintenance, and the medical services. But these are only a few. And if you act now, you can make your application and rest assured that you have a class space set aside in your name. If you're a high school graduate, we suggest you investigate this outstanding opportunity right away. So for complete information, you visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Team up with the Army, and you team up with success. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army, and this is Richard Hayes speaking, inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.